Hello, I'm Sue Romanoff from Edison Group. Today, I have the pleasure of catching up with David Beach, CEO of Basilea. Welcome, David. Thank you, Sue. Great. So, Basilea has a strong expertise in antifungal and antibiotics. It's a highly specialized area, and your focus is on the treatment of severe infection. What's the opportunity in the addressable market? Yeah, so we believe in Basilea that in, in antibacterials and antifungals, there's serious unmet medical need. And this is clear when you read about antimicrobial resistance in the newspapers, but also in terms of you know the mortality rates in these serious hospital infections are are high the toxicities the side effect profiles of existing treatments have got a room for improvement formulations oral iv and other types of formulations uh as well that you know that they could do with improving or just being available so in in this area of antibacterials and antifungals we, we see uh, you know unmet medical need in, in many different areas so Crisemba is your antifungal product and a key revenue driver. Could you provide background on the distribution partnerships in place and the associated economics? Yeah, so with, with Crisemba, we have actually uh, seven uh, different partners that are commercializing Crisemba around the world. Uh, you know, th these range from large pharma partners like Astellas and Pfizer to sort of smaller uh, regional players that cover are very good at covering a particular area. And uh, what the the basically that these partnerships and the sort of our participation in the in the value of those partnerships is is across is in two different areas. One is uh, sort of licensed partnerships, which tend to be the larger pharma partners, and that's in those cases uh, what Basilea does. It takes a royalty on the sales, and then we have milestone payments. And then with the generally the smaller partners, the the distribution partners, it tends to it's a uh, transfer price. So. We are responsible for the manufacturing. We sell the product at a transfer price, and then our margin is the transfer price less the cost of goods. And in those cases as well, milestone payments are also according to us. So, so that's broadly how our participation works. And then just one sort of final aspect is that if you look at so for Crescemba in the 12 months to June this year, sales were about over $420 million globally. And if you think of it as about a third of those those sales end up in our PL. So, you know, approximately a third of those sales are in our PL with the uh, the royalties and milestone piece being 100% margin and obviously the, the the product sales piece, the transfer price being, being a proportion of the transfer price. So, Zivterra is your anti MRSA broad spectrum antibiotic, and it'll probably be a large contributor to growth with the US approval. Could you share an update on that front? Yes, so it's it's an exciting moment, I guess you could say, for Zevtera, and key milestones are coming because we uh, we filed our NDA submission at the beginning of August uh, this year in 2023. We had the acceptance of the filing uh, early October, and uh, thereby we got our Padufa date, and the Padufa date is April the third, 2024. So, so actually. We're now obviously working, answering all the questions through the priority review cycle uh, for Zevtera. But uh, I guess you could say that's sort of the, the, where we are in terms of uh, the process. And then where we are now is also, as well as uh, you know, answering all the questions and going through the regulatory process, is also finalizing uh, the commercialization partner for Zevtera for the US. And uh, this is all critically important for us because, as you alluded to in your question, the US is the uh, key market, we believe. When you look at the sales potential of MRSA agents across different parts of the, the world, where the sales are generated from the different MRSA product sales, you see that the US is really quite dominant. Yeah, So uh, 80 to 90%, we believe, of the Ceftabiprol's of Tira potential is in the US. So that's why this is a, a critical milestone for us as a company. So, so you're you have this strong expertise in antifungal and antibiotics, but it's it's in an area that hasn't seen innovation in a decade, maybe two. How are you positioned versus the large pharma in this, in in general? Yeah, that actually we think we're in a unique spot because actually, uh, as you said in your in your question, you know, antimicrobials, antibacterials, antifungals 
haven't had a lot of focus uh, in the last sort of quite some time. And largely large pharma have moved out of the research, development and commercialization of these types of assets. Uh, but there is still a lot of innovation going on in the early research uh, uh, side of things. So actually, whether it be universities or startups, there's a lot of research money and a lot of research initiatives and innovation going on. But there are very few companies uh, of our size and our capability that, that, that can get involved in taking these sort of research stage assets, moving them through development, and then in our model, looking for a commercial partner. And that's actually where, as you've seen from our Crescembo and Zotura status, there are plenty of large pharma who are prepared to commercialize uh, antimicrobial assets, but they, they're they not so interested in doing the research and development. So, so we fill what we think is a sweet spot between those innovative research sort of institutions. We develop it, and then we look for a, a larger pharma sort of commercialization partner. So so for us, we think that's a very uh, uh, effective model. And we think we've got the capabilities to fill this gap that largely is uh, devoid of other players doing what we do. So so you're you're one of the only biotechs th that I'm aware of that has positive cash flow, but investors are never satisfied with status quo. Are you looking for additions to your portfolio as your two commercial products mature? Yes, I mean, clearly we've stated for uh, about a year and a half now where we announced our new strategy of going back to our roots of being an anti-infectives company. We've stated that we want to in-license extra uh, compounds uh, from the sort of late stage research through to the end of phase two. And that's what we definitely want to do. And we actually have shown through recent transactions that we are doing that. We're in the antibacterial and antifungal space. We see assets out there that we think we can add value to in the long term, uh, uh, being in Basilea's hands. So we will continue to uh, do that from you know for 2023 and beyond. And the fact that we're cash flow positive actually just means that for the immediate future, we don't need to go to raise money to actually be able to in license these assets and develop them. We can rely on the cash flows that are actually generated from Crescembra and Zepterra. So that does, in these current sort of turbulent times, that puts us, I think, in a very good position uh, to actually deliver on our strategy. So we've covered on some of these, but what what are catalysts and milestones that investors should look for in the next 12 to 18 months? Yeah, probably the sort of three key milestones or catalysts in the, in the immediate sort of future. One is just watch this space in terms of continued in licensing of assets in the in the antibacterial antifungal space. We've announced two very recently, but uh, uh, you know that's not the end of it. Watch this space for more assets and 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 you know at different stages of development as well. But particularly a focus on clinical stage assets. So so that's one thing to look out for. The other one is around as you touched on Zeftera, which is the uh, the two aspects of Zeftera. One obviously is that the final regulatory decision on the 3rd of April, 2024, but allied to that is the partner. Yeah, it's the commercialization partner. So the announcement on that. So that's that's sort of then securing, we believe, you know, a, a key milestone in the future success of Zevtera. And then the, the third one is probably a more general view of the company and keeping an eye on the revenues increasing uh, in the way they've been going very well in the previous years. So that will be in the full year results in the middle of February. So they're probably be the three key areas in terms of uh, milestones and, and things to look out for for Basilea. Thank, thank you, David, for bringing innovation to such an important area. Thank you all for joining us here today. If you'd like to learn more about Basilea, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you. <laughs>